So the, some of the pictures you're looking at are, um, in my opinion, and I think arguably, without a shadow of a doubt, the public's concept of the greatest British fighters never to win a world title. Now, um, most people, if you if you were asked that, they'd, they'd probably say, first question, Harold Bomber Graham. Uh, I, I, I could probably name maybe five. Um, you know, I mean, let's let's be right. You know, Bomber Graham. When you think of Nigel Ben and Eubank, they were they were both world champions. In fact, they were two weight world champions. But Harold Graham, probably, well, I would say of confidence, he'd beat Ben and Eubank on the same day. In fact, Eubank went very public and he said, why would you want to fight someone you can't hit? Um, you know, I think it's, I mean, to the real anoraks, like myself, boxing anoraks, the real historians, uh, Nigel Ben could have fought Bomber. It did this, it, the fight never even come close. Um, but my little list of greatest British fighters, um, in no particular order, you know, Harold Gra- Harold Bomber Graham. Yes, you know that's that's probably the very first name that you can uh, most people think of. Um, but Henry Wharton, York's Henry Wharton, British Commonwealth European, um, three time world title challenger, just came up short against. Eubank Ben uh, and Robin Reed. Mickey Duff said Eubank and Ben would have been in the top 10 greatest super middleweights of all time. And I wouldn't argue with that. Uh, you know, I mean, he's the last person on pugilism you'd you'd want an argument with. But um, yeah, Henry Wharton, lovely guy, uh, fantastic fighter, very aggressive, very... Uh, very good at sitting in the pocket, you know, just literally staying there and moving at half an inch, which is all, you know, that's the that's difference between professional and amateur boxing. It's reserving energy. Um, yeah, Henry, quite possibly even, maybe after Ricky Hatton, the best supported British fighter. I mean, he he, he done ridiculous sales. Um I know one guy, Nick Manners, when I interviewed him for the Nick Manners book, he said, uh, Mickey loved the blue-eyed boy. And uh, Henry ticked every box. You know, he, he could sell tickets. Uh, proper handsome and a lovely guy as well. So I definitely think Henry Wharton is, without a shadow of a doubt, um, deserves his spot with Bomber Graham. Um, Kirkland Lang. now. Um, pure talent, pure, ridiculously natural talent. You've got to put Kirkland Lang there because, you know, yes, he, you know, he lost. It was dedication that let him down, you know, when he beat the great Ger- Roberto Duran, Hands of Stone. Um, Mickey said, you know, basically Mickey Duff said, I can, I can make you a millionaire. And, um, he went missing for a year, well, near enough a year, I think it was 10 months. Um, Quite, you know, it's it's been public knowledge that the guy, and he's no longer here, so I don't want to speak ill of the dead, but he um, had his addiction issues and and um, basically ruined his natural talent. I mean, he was blessed, you know, the clues in the name. His nickname was the Gifted One. And, uh, yeah, Roberto Duran, I'd, I'd put in the, well, he was the GOAT, wasn't he? The greatest super middleweight, sorry, the greatest lightweight of all time. Nobody beat Duran. Nobody at lightweight. Um, Barry McGuigan, there's loads of people who said, you know, nobody could have beat Duran. He's probably the greatest offensive fighter of all time. And he definitely merits a top 10 spot. Um, Who else have we got? So, Kevin Mitchell. Now, anyone who's... Kanda wants to get into boxing. 
um, or, you know, start maybe getting their son into boxing. If you want to show them videos, you'd show them Kevin Mitchell, you know, Kevin, uh, Carl Froch, free time world champion, achieved greatness uh, forever. You know, he will be remembered as a an all-time great. But as great as he was, he actually boxed with his face at times. So for, for you know, a pure slick, like what boxing is about, hit and not be hit, uh, Kevin Mitchell, he was the same. You know, he was, uh, I'm trying to think. I'm sure, well, uh, so he won the British beat Johansson, but he didn't defend it because he was dead at the weight. Um, yeah, he more or less completed boxing, barring, um, you know, he just fell short. But he was another one who really vastly ruined the talent he had, natural talent. And uh, as I said, anyone who wants to get into boxing, show me, show me tapes of Kevin Mitchell on YouTube. Because um, that's what it's about, you know, it's about being hit, sorry, being hitting and not being hit. And uh, you know, it's not boxing's not about who's the tough, toughest man who can take the most lever. It's about being the most cleverest and slick, and you know, junior winner, which I've just got his book coming out. And uh, boxing's, you know, you know what the art is to basically punch people in the face. And Mickey Duff used to say the chin's not designed to be hit, particularly by two hundred and twenty pound athletes. And uh, another guy who I think, uh, well, obviously, also Kevin Lang, Kevin Mitchell, Bomber Graham, Henry Wharton. Uh, I would say the top five. I don't know about you. Let me know in the comments below. But Ryan Rhodes. Um, yeah, T. I well, certainly won the British title. I think he was the youngest British champion as well. And he completed it. He. I'm sure he was the quickest to win it outright. Was it 90 days, something like that? Um, I know it was some kind of record, you know, back in the days when he was the Spice Boy. But, um, yeah, he just, you know, in actual fact, Brendan Ingle used to say the most talented out of them all as kids was Ryan Rhodes, uh, not Nassim Ahmed. And he is, in my opinion, certainly up there for you know, maybe he was the best, I don't know. But um yeah, let us know your thoughts, let us know your comments. The best British fighters of all time to not win that world title. Um you know, in the greatest respect, when you think of someone like Bomber Graham or Henry Wharton, you think of <sighs> boxing's about timing, you know, it's all about the right place at the right time. I remember my friend Gary Gary Sykes said to me, we were way off. We wanted the Liam Wolfs fight so many times and they wouldn't entertain it. And then when Gary was on the slide, then uh, they wanted it. And uh, obviously by then, you know, Gary was shot a bit. But when you think of, you know, this is in the greatest respect, but when you look at fighters like Nicky Cook, Stuart Hall, uh, Paul Silky Jones, all genuine class fighters but when you look at them and you think they achieved Mount Everest you know they were world champions and the likes of Kevin Mitchell uh Henry Wharton Bomber Graham never so that's quite hard to you know boxing game is just not fair but uh as I said let us know your thoughts let us know your comments um I think the greatest fighter to never win a British title in my head, is uh, Tony Booth. Um, very, very good fighter, you know, and uh, I suppose he turned into a little bit of a journeyman in the end, but he was, um, you know, there's a lot of British champions out there who were nowhere near the level of Tony Booth when he was on his air game. But, um, yeah, this video is all about the best British fighters who just fell short. You know, a uh, friend of mine, Ishan Pickering, he was a British Commonwealth European. He um, he just felt sh there's a lot of them, you know, and uh, winning a world title is, it's that Mount Everest, isn't it? I remember Junior Witter saying to me in his book, 
you know, the next day I woke up and I slept with the WBC world title. I thought it was a dream. But, um, yeah, it's unquestionably, it must, you know, you, we can only dream, can we? But uh, let us know your thoughts. Let us know your comments below. Have I missed anyone out? And uh, have a great weekend. Thanks for your time.